last time I did a video on the 37 Studebaker was 14 months ago. So I'm really looking forward to this one. This will be video number three in the series of building the body on the 37 Studebaker Modified. As I explained in uh, an earlier video, I'm taking my cues on uh, how to build this body from Randy Grubb. If you go on his website, you'll see uh, several of his creations uh, where he used this overlapping uh, panel method. Um, so I've thought a lot about it and I have an approach to it. I've kind of done some sketching and uh, let me show you what I've come up with. If you recall from my earlier videos when I was discussing uh, the design of the cycle cart, I referenced Brandy Grubb and his, uh, his website. These are photographs of some items he made. So I like how he's done this uh, overlapping panels with rivets. That's really what I want to do. See this right uh, here. I want to have a similar look on the Studebaker. So it'd be a bunch of panels riveted together creating a look. One could say somewhat of a steampunk look, but uh, I thought I'd give that a shot. Now if I was uh, building this in a traditional sense, uh, like a sports car let's say, there would be lar large panels welded together to create the body. But uh, I just want to do something different and that's with this overlapping riveted panel kind of look. Um, so I gave it some thought and I would start from uh, the rear and the bottom and then the next panel would be overlaid and then overlaid and then it would work its way up to the top where there would be a cap strip. Uh, then all these little parts and pieces around the top and where the rounded corners are, they uh, should be easier to make because they would be smaller pieces. The, since I, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't weld aluminum, this allows me to make a body where it's just drilled holes and riveted together. It should be interesting to see what I can come up with. Okay, I've been uh, cleaning out the garage and getting ready to get started. I welded together a simple frame to get the body up to working height. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I have some uh, construction type paper. I'm going to make some patterns and then I'll cut out some blanks. So uh, I'll have to develop the technique of every step and exactly how I split up the panels. It's hard to say how many there will ultimately be uh, because I'm, I'm pretty sure as I get going and develop the technique, I'll it'll become an art project and it'll be fun to uh, figure out how to piece it all together. So let's uh, cut up some paper and make some patterns. I picked up some poster board that I can use to make some patterns with. I bought a sheet, uh, a 4 by 8 sheet of 50 thousandths uh, aluminum uh, 3003 and uh, I took it down to the shop. I have a foot shear down there and chopped up some starter pieces here. Then I made uh, a couple of blanks thinking I was going to do six pieces here. Uh, I've subsequently decided to just do three long pieces but I'll have the top and the bottom on first and then this will cap it. Then I can see this seam here which is part of the look. I've already run these through the slip roll to get a shape. Alright, so what I'm finding is I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it, so I'm experimenting and at some point I'll hook up on the method I'm going to use and away I go.
I've attached the top and bottom piece to the wood buck and that wood buck is going to come in handy because it'll hold these, pla these uh, pieces in place until I can rivet them together. Eventually the wood buck will go away and this will just be a metal bed. I'll have an inner wall and a top cap. So um, I determined I need a, the center piece is going to be eight and three quarters of an inch. I'm going to overlap three quarters here and three quarters here. I'm going to slip it in behind this so I can drill these holes and once it's in place then I can rivet it together. And eventually these screws will be rivets once the wood buck is gone. At least that's the thinking at this point. You know, every, with every step, you know, I get a little more of an idea how I want to do this. It's kind of fun figuring it out as I go. Alright, let's put that middle piece on. I finished installing the center piece on each side here. You can see where it overlaps. I'm going to put uh, four rivets in between the screws. There'll be a top cap, there'll be rivets here. Uh, now, you know, why am I doing this overlay thing? Well, just because it's different. I don't need a lot of special tools to do it. I could very easily make this one panel and then I, you know, break the top over and even down a little bit on the other side. That would be so much easier and faster. But, I don't know, I just... Uh, like to give it an artistic flair if I can. Try something different. Well, it didn't take too long to put these rear pieces on. So I'm going to focus on the inside panels. And uh, I did a little sketch here. Kind of an exploded view. The two sides, the front and the rear. And that will clad the inside and then I'll have a, a top cap and uh, I'll probably make a rib or two out of aluminum give me a chance to use the shrinker I could make a angle iron piece and shrink it to that arc anyway we'll see I have the front panel installed and I've cut the parts for the inside panels. You can see how I'm going to hold them together. The, here's the rear panel and I has a broken edge here that will be riveted. I have the same, same thing on the front there. So I'm going to drill these out, put some screws into the wood buck, but eventually change it to rivets. I'm fitting this piece right now. So little by little, it's coming together. I've been working on this thing for about a week, but this uh, 50 thousandths aluminum, this right here and these on the sides, I bought that uh, a couple months ago. Um, and so I uh, got it from an aluminum place on the other side of town. Well, subsequently I went to buy more and uh, I got it from my local supplier, industrial metal supply nearby and all they had was 40 thousandths that's what this is this is 40 thousandths 3003 alloy aluminum and uh, I have to say I like the 40 thousandths a lot better than the 50 it's just for me most of the time I work in 32 thousandths so the 40 is good I've never worked with the 3003 and it's nice it drills good bends easy cuts nice files beautiful so I'm going to change these out. These are 50 thousandths. I'm going to change them out to the 40 thousandths. One thing you don't see in my videos is mistakes I've made or how long it actually takes to do something. These are panels that didn't quite come out right. I started using the foot shear which I have down at work and cutting square to the right to the uh, to the measurement it takes practice so these parts didn't fit but uh, I cut these today and they're much more accurate and much more square and in time I'll get the hang of it and be able to chop up really nice parts and pieces that are to measurement 
but these are the new 40 thousandths side panels. I haven't rolled them, put them through the roll yet, but anyway. So, uh, so much for learning the learning curve. But that's all right, I'll have plenty of scraps. Just keep working my way through this. Okay, I have the inside panels in. Turned out all right. And I replaced these. These are now 40 thousandths, and I like it a lot better. The overlap is much more subtle, which is really what I like with the thinner panel. I'm gonna change this out too. Here you can see this is 50 thousandths. That's 40 thousandths. Now that uh, all the panels of this bed are the 40 thousandths material, I can focus on um, a top cap and I want to put corners here on all four corners actually. So uh, I'm going to make up some angle iron three quarter by three quarter of the same stock 40 thousandths. And then I'll, I have a shrinker and I will show you. I'm going to shrink to this shape and have a little uh, pad in here that I can use. to get the, the arc correct. And that'll cover all this and it'll, and it'll be riveted on. All right, let me show you that. With the foot shear, I cut some pieces inch and a half wide and then I put them in the finger brake and bent, up, bent them over, made these little angle irons, three quarter by three quarter out of the 40 thousandths stock. And uh, there you can see the stretcher, uh, but I have this shrinker set up here. Uh, this is from Steve Vincent, and he lent it to me. So I've got it mounted on the edge of the table here, and I'm going to do a little test shrinking. slick as can be so I'll uh, this is a this is a one and an eighth and it's still bent real nice so that three-quarter stock will bend up nice to that pattern so I'm happy with this well I put it through one pass and I'm almost to the arc just a little bit more finesse work that wasn't too tough. I took out the screws that were over here and laid this on here and it fits pretty good. I'm real happy with that and uh, the theory is that the rivets will go in the holes that are already drilled for the screws. Yeah. Alright. So now I have to make three more, one for each corner. Okay, moving on. I'm pretty excited the fact that I have uh, these corners made now. So I think what I'm gonna do is uh, try to put it together and get rid of the wood buck um, now that I have the four corners. So I'll rivet the four corners together. Then I have to make some internal ribs uh, you know, one, two, three, and then down the side and across the front. And then I can rivet the inner uh, skin. And then I can figure out a top cap. But uh, let's see how that goes. Time to rivet it all together. Here I've uh, assembled with the Clecos the rear panel, the corner. I still have to add, drill some more holes. Then I'll put some rivets in and I'll have one panel and then I'll connect the sides to it. Drill along the sides here. Alright, so hopefully this is going to work out. I'm kind of winging it. So, continuing on.
Okay, after riveting the four corners, I have the basic structure together. Didn't turn out too bad. Of course, I need to add more rivets here, mostly for looks, but uh, that gives me something to work with so I can create the inner ribs and then uh, that will allow me to attach the inner panels. Alright, so far so good. I've not had much opportunity to, to do any sheet metal work and I'm really enjoying this. It's a fun learning curve. I'm making a few mistakes, but uh, in the end, I'm actually building something. So, uh, this bed's coming along okay. Um, my scrap pile's getting bigger. So, I want to install the inner walls and I need uh, some uh, some ribs to do that with. So I'm going to make here's some stock that I sheared up. I'm going to make some angle iron, some angles and uh, some U-channel. And uh, that'll allow me to put a, finish putting it together. Here's the rivets that I'm using. They're 530 seconds. It's also the same size as the Clecos. I made some angle iron and some C channel and I've uh, proceeded to attach a couple of them inside. I still have to put a middle one here. Then I can put the inner panel in, attach it to these. I'm going to put three of them here and then I have to do the ones on the side which will have to fit the arc. Alright, so it's coming along. Here I put the inner panels in there, I just set them in there. So I have to make these, these ribs now. I have these finished. And so it's time to take the wood buck apart. I've actually got to cut it apart because I want I need this inner rib here. This is my pattern. So let me cut this thing up. Now with the shrinker, I can shape this angle iron to fit this pattern. And that'll be the start of the inner rib for the sides. This shrinker is a cool little tool. Just got to trim it to length. And rib number one is ready. So here's the first rib that I made. Didn't turn out too bad. Yep. I need to make eight of these. Two down. I'm working my way through it. Okay, I finished all eight ribs, so now I can start putting it together with that inner 
set of inner panels in there. All right. Here's the first rib on the side that's riveted in and the rivets went into the holes that used to be where the wood screws were. So that'll at least hold it all together while I put in the rest of the rivets. Okay, let's see. I have uh, seven more to install. I wanted to make this bed to look as close to this model as I could. I have the rounded side panels. I don't have the rounded bottom though. Uh, maybe I'll do that. I'm going to put some aluminum tube on top like this right here. I have to come up with a top cap. But uh, I've made some decent progress. The inner panels are installed. You know, if I was building this out of wood, I could be dimensionally accurate, but I haven't worked in sheet metal very often, so it's a little off here and there, but I guess that's okay, considering it's my first real project. Okay, let's see. I'm going to try to trial fit it on the, on the car here. I still have to put in a bunch of rivets because I like the look. This is closer to what I'm after. You can see how there's rivets two inches apart. But it's sitting on the car pretty decent right now. I uh, added a couple of angle irons here. And then my original plan was that uh, this gas cap was going to be more or less flush so that's worked out okay well I think I'm at the 30 minute mark so I'm gonna call it the end of this segment and uh, in the next one we'll uh, come up with a top cap and uh, maybe start on the body proper alright this has been fun looking forward to the next one thanks for watching everybody see you next time